Front Row Motorsports, Stuart Haas Racing, Michael McDowell, Trackhouse, Harrison Burton, NASCAR Silly Season is upon us. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Yes, NASCAR Silly Season is 100% here. The month of May is here, which means that by the time we get to the Coke 600, we'll likely have a few bigger Silly Season stories to talk about. But currently, right now, the biggest Silly Season story is Front Row Motorsport and Stuart Haas Racing potentially merging, coming together at the altar to form a four-car team. That four-car team would result in Stuart Haas Racing selling off two of their charters, which apparently they have recently sent out basically a list of requirements, in a sense, that uh, of what it would take to purchase their charters to teams that are looking to purchase them. A Front Row Motorsport two-car Stuart Haas Racing team merging to form a four-car Ford Tier 1 team seems to be the way to go. So I've had this sent to me a couple of times over the last two weeks. Bob Hawkers talked about it in his story Monday morning for Fox Sports. And Bob mentioned something that I had not heard yet, which was that this could also include a bit of a real estate transaction because Sewer Haas Racing currently owns two shops in Mooresville, one for their NASCAR program, one for their Formula One program. A four-car front row team can't exist in the front row motorsport shop, meaning that they would need a bigger shop. Stuart Haas Racing's shop, of course, houses their four-car NASCAR Cup Series team as well as their two-car Xfinity Series team. That could be part of this deal as well. I've also had somebody else tell me that there is an equity partner, a financial partner, that is part of this deal too, that is ex exists within the sport that would also bring in outside money. Not going to share who that name is yet, but it does all make sense uh, in the grand scheme of things. What happens to the Xfinity program over at Stuart Haas Racing? Up in the air. Does it become part of this merged team? Does it go away? Does it get sold off? Not really sure yet. Really focused just on the Cup Series side of this. And Front Row does have a Truck Series team as well, currently with Lane Riggs, who's getting into fights, basically causing an international incident almost on Saturday night. Uh, between he and Cam Waters, uh, the Australian, which I would never fight anybody from Australia. I wouldn't even get in their face. They're going to do things to me that I was woke up just completely baffled by it. However, I did try on these lockdown brand shorts, uh, which are, they're an Australian brand. And the shorts are cut like Australians like them. They're tight. I got, I've been working out. My legs are, my legs are looking pretty buff right now. Shorts are tight. They got me feeling like I was Australian real quick. Got online, bought five gallons of Vegemite, thought about ordering a koala, checked to see if kangaroos were zoned for my neighborhood. They're not. They're absolutely not. Chickens, yes. Kangaroos, nope. Called the office down at the village. They said, no, nah, you can't do that. And I was like, ah, makes sense. Went ahead and got myself a Toyota Hilux. I'm importing that because I'm going to go drive into the Outback. But yeah, Lockdown brand makes great stuff. And you can also get 10% off using the code BREAKHARD10 at checkout. That was, a, that was a shameless plug thanks to Cam Waters right there. But for Front Row Motorsport and Stuart Haas Racing, a merger makes all the sense in the world. Now, what drivers would they keep? Good question. Bob Hawkers mentioned something that I had talked about on here a few weeks ago, that the most logical options to keep are Chase Briscoe and Josh Berry. They both have multi-year deals, which makes sense. No Gragson's on a year-to-year -year basis. By the sounds of it, Ryan Priest is out of contract at the end of the year. Now, there could be a home for Noah Gragson at this newly formed four-car team between Front Row and Stuart Haas Racing. And that's if Michael McDowell leaves Front Row at the end of the year. Bob Pockers mentioned potentially Spire as a landing spot for him. Now, Spire would like a veteran presence, of course. Michael McDowell is a, an incredibly stout race car driver, a guy that will get the most out of the car for you and generally not destroy equipment, which is exactly what you want. And he's a guy that went out there and beat Hendrick Motorsports and Chase Elliott straight up on a road course last year at the Indianapolis road course for front row. So Michael McDowell, good Christian boy, as Daryl Waltrip likes to refer to him, is an absolute wheel man. So it makes sense if they would like to hire him. If they do hire him, that opens up a seat, which is... a a likely landing spot for, for Noah Gregson. Outside of that, where could Noah go? Well, we know he's not going back to Legacy if they land a third charter. He's likely not headed to 2311 Racing, although he's having a really stellar year so far. Could the 21 car at the Wood Brothers be in play? Because according to Bob Pockris, there's a rising chance. It is highly unlikely, in his words, that Harrison Burton returns to that 21 car next year. And it makes sense. Harrison Burton, while he does have more top 10s than Corey LaJoy, 
Um, and he actually has top tens on non-drafting tracks where Corey LaJoy has never scored one at a non-drafting track. You can fact check it. He's not performing well. That's essentially a fourth Penske car. And while the other cars have all won in the next gen era, he hasn't even come close. He did get a third place finish at the Indianapolis road course, I believe, but that was not indicative of where he was running. Maybe it wasn't the Indianapolis road course, whatever. He did get a really good finish one time. So that ride could be open. And maybe that's a landing spot for a guy like Noah Gragson. Could be a landing spot potentially for Cole Custer. They could go outside of the Ford program even and try to find somebody to put in there. But for now, that's what it sounds like is happening at front row Stuart Haas Racing and going on there. Speaking of the charters that Stuart Haas Racing is selling off, we of course know Legacy Motor Club 2311 and Trackhouse are the teams that are all searching for a charter. Trackhouse can take the path of least resistance here and go ahead and buy that third charter, let Daniel Suarez walk at the end of the year, and now they have three drivers under contract with three charters. Everything's perfect. You have Rosh Astain, Shane Van Gisbergen, and Zane Smith all in your cars, all in-house. Problem solved. Now, if they do keep all four drivers signed and they want to hold on to Daniel Suarez, things get complicated once again because you're going to need two charters, and I just don't see them finding two charters out there, or at least paying the price for two charters. Again, nobody's buying charters until a charter agreement gets signed, And a lot of things still hinge on what the results of the election are, just like every industry and every election year. So a lot of things are still very much up in the air. 2311 Racing, looking for a third charter. Who do they go out and get? Uh, Do they move a Chandler Smith in? Well, that's dependent on whether Martin Trex Jr. retires from Joe Gibbs Racing. Do they get a Corey Heim? Maybe, but if Legacy gets a third charter, you have to assume that Corey Heim is the driver they're looking at for, for that. So... There's a lot of things that are up in the air when it comes to charters, but we know there's people out there looking for them. I was told about potentially Richard Childers Racing looking for a third charter. And honestly, after what Austin Dillon said yesterday during the rain delay, I think RC's got some other things he needs to get under control up there and welcome. Every day at lunch, if you come to RCR upstairs, there's some guys getting it all. Lunchtime in Welcome, North Carolina sounds like a wild time. So maybe they're just the most progressive team in NASCAR and we didn't even know it. That's not true. But, uh, I did edit the clip to make it sound funnier than it was. Austin Dillon was talking about pickleball and uh, how it's become super competitive at the RCR shop. So, yeah, I don't think they're buying one yet, but, you know, stranger things have happened before. Moving on to a few of the other things that we've heard. JTG Doherty Racing. We know that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just signed a three-year deal with them. However, in the press release, there was no mention of Jody or Tad Geschichter who bring the Kroger sponsorship with them. There hasn't been any public comment from them since October. Gordon Smith, who was listed as co-owner, is now listed in the press release as owner. Brad Doherty still listed as co-owner in the team. Assuming that they have control of the charter now, that makes things a little bit more interesting because now the 47 team is a perfect candidate to merge with another team, which I have heard that that has been discussed. Haven't heard it from two people, um, so I'm not going to talk about it yet. I only I'll, disclaimer here. I'll only talk about NASCAR rumors if I've heard it from two people that I trust. And in this situation, I've only heard it from one person, so I'm not talking about it yet. Uh, but that apparently has been discussed. On the other hand, what happens with Tad and Jody Geschichter? Do they move to another team? Well, Adam Stern reported that they're going to take their Kroger sponsorship to Joe Gibbs Racing. Well, at the same time, I had heard that Trackhouse was also vying for that Kroger sponsorship. It would have been great if the Geschichters had control of the charter and they could take that to Trackhouse along with their Kroger sponsorship. That would have been Chef's Kiss, the perfect landing for Justin Marks as he continues to just absolutely disrupt the NASCAR industry. Would Trackhouse take the Kroger sponsorship with Tad Geschichter? Yeah, absolutely, they would. But it does seem more and more likely that 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 Kroger sponsorship and Taga Schichter are going to end up over at Joe Gibbs Racing. So that's kind of how all that appears to be playing out for for now. But yeah, NASCAR silly season is very much up in the air at this point. So we'll have to wait and see kind of how all this plays out over the next you know couple of months. But I think by the time we get to the Coke 600, a few of these things will have started to sort themselves out and we'll hear a little bit more about what's going on here. But Stuart Haas Racing is definitely selling off charters as long as people meet their requirements, which I don't think that's going to be an issue once the charter agreement gets signed. 
Front Row Motorsports and Sewer House Racing potentially merging. Eh, Harrison Burton likely out. Michael McDowell could be on the move here. And there's still some other things that could 100% be in play that just aren't ready to be talked about yet. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHard blog. And if you want BreakHard merch like this support your local short track t-shirt, you can go to BreakHard.store. The link is also in the description below.